I believe what we're doing here today is a start of something huge. Absolutely. I really do. And I wanted to be a, a part of when this small thing just started out. I want to be able to say, I was there Absolutely. when we just started out. It was fascinating. So thanks for having me. Appreciate it. The gold and the treasure behind a lot of B conferences. The conferences are great. The education, the speakers, it's awesome. But truth be told, I think a lot of us come for the community, we come for the fellowship, we come to spend time with each other. And some of the gold moments of those kind of conferences um, are the moments in between, the moments after. And so what we kind of wanted to do as a stream team as a whole was put on a stream team field day and a creator convergence. We wanted everyone to be able to converge, be here, be in one place. Uh, content creators, product creators, beekeepers, kind of the, all the folks that are in our fold. Um, and it was a fun way to just kind of see what happens. Judging by the turnout already, I, I think we, we, we're on to something here. Well, hey guys, welcome back to another Stream Team beekeeping chat. This one is uh, special. Bruce, Brian here live in person uh, here at Nature's Image Farm. And behind us here is an entire live studio audience. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you. I want, to th I want to thank everybody for, for being here. We have folks that have flown from all over the country, driven here, thumbed their way here. You guys are awesome. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. Uh, I want to thank everyone if you're tuning in on the Stream Team Beekeeping Chat live here on YouTube. Thanks for joining us this morning. If you're listening back to the replay later or the Nature's Image Farm podcast, thanks for spending some time with us. One of the great things about those conferences is you finally get to face-to-face -face meet uh, some folks that you haven't had an opportunity uh, to meet. Um, that was the first time that I very briefly uh, got to meet my long lost Uncle Dave. David Burns. You guys know who David Burns is. Let's, let's put him on the spot. David, come on down. <laughs> hey, guys. We are not related either. <laughs> <laughs> You can actually tell by, by the appearance. <laughs> He's been driving around. There's no genetic similarities. One of us is a better looking one. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to take that trophy from you, but oh, one, of us, yeah. one of us had to. Thanks for coming all the way from, from Illinois to be a part of this whole oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Enjoyed you know, it. I, yeah. I, what I re really appreciate about not only your YouTube channel, but who you are as a person, you're, you're not the guy who is the let me take all the credit, worship my beekeeping channel. You're an honest, down-to-earth, humble guy doing the best you can sharing the beekeeping journey for your viewers. And I think that that's absolutely awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, I want to start off by saying I appreciate that a lot. Um, to me, beekeeping was uh, a hobby that developed into something by accident. Yeah. And I started making... Uh, uh, videos on YouTube back in 2008, only a couple of years after YouTube started. And I was just kind of figuring stuff out and blogging about it in a video format. And it never really became anything for many, many years. And then all at once it became something. And, you know, I mean, I think I did it for 10 or 15 years before it really was like, oh, this could be something, you know? And so... It was really inspiring for me to start hearing back from you guys that, that watch my channel, like, oh, you helped me get started in beekeeping, or I, I, you helped me with this and that. And, and that really began to motivate me to think that I'm having an influence on people in beekeeping and getting people to not only start beekeeping, but keep healthier bees, make fewer mistakes. And, and I often you know, spend my day just looking at a camera by myself. <laughs> or I'm in a hive by myself. And I'm, I'm a very uh, extrovert. I'm, I'm very social. So the, it kills me just to spend my whole day alone in a hive, alone behind a camera. So coming here today and being a part of this where I see so many of you, give yourselves a hand. This is yeah. great. Uh, and very inspiring. And so I, I love just being a part of a community of beekeepers and that's what I love so much about, you know, Cayman Reynolds uh, did so much to to start off Hive Life. And I'm looking forward to being with him. Again, he's doing the North American Bee Honeybee Expo in Louisville, uh, January 4th through 6th. And he's invited me to speak there. So 
Uh, I think all of us nice. are going to be there. I think awesome. all the content creators are going to be there. So we're going to, we're looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. But I've got to say this: if I, I was thinking about live streaming for years, you know, but I just kept thinking, you know, we get negative comments. All of us have stuff yeah. that you know you don't want to just have somebody attack your live stream and say bad things and all that. But oh, we got a camera going out. But. Um, <laughs> When uh, when I saw these guys at Hive Life, um, I kept I kept polling my audience, saying, "Do you want me to do live stream?" And we do live stream. And they were like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." But I, I approached Bruce and Brian and Greg, and especially Brian, he just came up to me and said, "David, you got a live stream. Yeah, you got, you got a live stream." I was like, "Oh, I don't know. What about trollers? What about all the headaches of the technology?" And he said, "I'll help you. I'll help you do it." So this this team here actually came alongside of me and propped me up. I mean, I was just like a baby learning to walk. I knew nothing, you know. And they actually got me live streaming. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it so much. And I said, what about the trollers? What about people that get on there and just blast me? And they said, well, you're going to have to get a bot and you got to put all these profane words in there. So I spent like one day typing in... <laughs> Two million profane <laughs> words. Were you surprised? Like I, yes, maybe, I was very surprised. Maybe you. I, I, I was struggling to find enough, and I'm thinking. Then you start going down a rabbit, and I'm thinking, did I just spend ten minutes trying to find every bad word I wasn't supposed and to say as a kid? And every different way to spell it. And every way to spell it with caps numerals, and no cap. caps, and no caps. Wow. And I was like, I, I had to ask some of my older children, like, what does this word mean? And they were like, you don't want to know. You'd, but I, anyway, you guys were yeah. great to help me start live streaming, and I really appreciate it. I. They asked me, you know, would I want to come here? I said, absolutely, because I'll tell you what, I believe what we're doing here today is a start of something huge. Absolutely. I really do. And I wanted to be a, a part of when this small thing just started out. I want to be able to say, I was there. Absolutely. When we just started out, it was fascinating. So thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You're, it's, it's a lot of fun, uh, not just only to have you here, but to consider you a friend. I mean, I was considering you an uncle for a little while, but I, I think you just, yeah, I think you just killed that one. So I think we we'll have to let that one fly. I don't think the age works out no. for me to be your uncle. No. Maybe I don't know, uh, that, that, David. You and your channel, or I, I don't want to, I don't mean to intentionally put you on a pedestal, but your what you've done is, is really legendary in the beekeeping YouTube space on how far your channel has grown, how big it is, the reach that you have with folks. As you've journeyed with this experience, how has your experience changed over the last couple of years, um, not only with the growth that it seems to be occurring within beginning beekeepers, um, but also with this new addition of streaming and reaching kind of a similar yet different audience on a different platform? How, what has that meant to you and your channel and you as a beekeeper? Hmm. Uh, it, it has been... Uh, very hard to wrap my mind around it. And I think uh, when I look at YouTube, I don't look at myself as a success on YouTube. I, I look at myself as the first day I made that first video to when I made my video yesterday feels the same for me. I don't see the audience when I'm talking on, into a camera. So I'm just still doing the same thing. And I think if you want to call it success or whatever, but the reason I have a larger audience, I feel is because when I go in front, in front of a camera and I work my beads and all, I just try to be myself. Yeah. I just want to be me. If I, That's great. I, I've had other careers where I couldn't be me. I was under uh, different kind of pressures where I had to perform in a different level. And it feels so good when you can be yourself. Yeah. And so now I just love making videos. And I, I'm hoping that the, the few people that watch me are like, this guy's okay to listen to. You know, I have a lot of people, don't get me wrong, a lot of people say, oh, this video is way too long. You're too, you talk way too much. Can you condense it smaller? But I have other people say, could you the make longer, it longer? The longer the better. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just listen to this when I'm in the truck or something. So if we follow the comments on YouTube, we're just going to be oh all over gosh, the place. You, know? your tail. you can't yeah, yeah. do that. Yeah. I, I read a comment this morning where one guy was kind of saying, why does anybody watch this guy? He, his voice is feminine. He talks like a lady. And it's like, really? <laughs> I don't know. There's so, all the curds in the world like yeah, this behind the screen. I, so I think live stream, 
um, is is a place where people can actually, you know, be on there and ask questions. I love answering questions. Mm -hmm. But my channel evolved into being a channel for new beginners, one to yeah. five year uh, beekeepers. Right. And I have a lot of people. It's required me to really take a step back and say, wow, I have to... I have to understand that I, I I had too high of expectations. You know, I have people saying, hey, I've been keeping bees for a year or two now. And they ask a question that they should have known way before they started. Yeah. And I have to say, wait a minute. It's not meant for me to judge. I don't know their situation. I need to come alongside of them point. where they're at right now. Meet them where they're at. Yeah, meet them where you are and say, okay, what you're looking at is a drone mm -hmm. or that's called a frame. That's called a deep Without frame. belittling yeah, and saying, you without, dummy, you should have yeah, known that three like, years ago. What's wrong with you? I've got yeah, online courses. Why don't that. you take one of my courses? Yeah. You know, No, you just need to come along. But the hardest thing for me that's just, it's quite crushing actually. I With 126,000 subscribers, they a lot of them that I, I love and appreciate them so much, they they want to talk to me, they want to call me, they want to come right. to my house, they want to email me. If on, if one percent of them were able to do that, that'd be a thousand and two hundred and fifty people a day. Right. And I could never make There's another no video. Way. Right. So it's it's really tough because I want to. I want to answer every question, every comment, but there's I can't. Right. And that's the hardest part. For me is like how do I still stay personal with my audience but realize it's a gigantic audience that time doesn't allow that it's not practical that's kind of where that's hard for me it's kind of where little situations like this convergence is conferences yes, where you yeah. can come face to face Absolutely. you can shake someone you can see them yes. oh yeah um, if, yeah. if, if you're next to your better looking nephew you can really appreciate the differences <laughs> in, in the channels and and such, yeah. but what you you hit on a couple of really great points there, and I think um, a lot of folks uh, we have a, a growing but still a small in comparison subscriber base, uh, and at some point I stopped looking at all that. And what you just said there is, is gold for anybody who is starting a YouTube channel or they're growing one. Is when you're just yourself and you're sharing that, there is a certain authenticity and a yeah, genuine nature right. with that, that you don't have to fake anything. Because no. every time you produce, that's right. it's, it's, a, it's a similar product. And that's the audience that you want. That's exactly the audience right. you want. Because you're not exactly. trying to be this for that yes. or this for them. Absolutely. And you do a really good job. I, 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 one of your really great strengths is not only, um, not just the, the video editing side of, of kind of assimilating the storyline, but you do a great job of breaking things down where folks can easily digest a complicated subject mm -hmm. in a very concise way where, oh, okay, point of reference, point of reference, where there is problem, cause, cure. And you do a fantastic job of doing that. And what I appreciate about the YouTube, the, 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 the content creator sphere is that you've, you've got very few channels that can do what you do. Mm. And then you've got stuff, we've got Bruce who has a experiential side of him working the bees and how he's trying to figure out, and that goes into this beautiful mosaic. Then you've got Brian who's just nitty gritty showing exactly what he's doing. You have us who can't get a single video out, it seems like most of the time at all, but we all are this beautiful mosaic, this yeah, the own I little agree. shape of a, of, a, of a puzzle that fits together and it, makes, it paints a beautiful picture. And you yeah. do a great job doing that. Well, I appreciate that. Um, there was a point in time where, you know, I, uh, I think I'm the oldest running beekeeping channel on YouTube. Wow. Yeah. And Fred Dunn started a few months before me, but he was doing other things like chickens, chickens. and he didn't start beekeeping. So the there was a point in time where I thought, you know what? I can't make another video on YouTube on beekeeping. I mean, there's only so many that you right. can make. I've yeah. done, I didn't install a package. I've done varroa mite. I've, and my wife said, are you going to be able to ever make another video? But it is amazing once you start drilling down, there, it's no limit. Right. I, I keep thinking like, oh, there's so many videos I need to make on in, on beekeeping. It's phenomenal. But I want to tell you, uh, I want to get back to something you mentioned about being yourself. And we all have different videos that we make, and we think this is going to really be a good one, oh. right? And all at once is like oh. nobody liked it. Crickets. Was it my thumbnail? Was it my title? Well, this, yeah. I gave my oh, I, yeah. I gave my life for this video. I I shed blood and sweat and tears over it. I thought it was the best one. I, and then I just go out there and make a dumb one to me. It feels like, well, this was dumb. And it, and it just it blows hits. up. And I'm like, I can't figure this out. But the best, the funnest one I ever had was I made a video. I woke up early in the morning and I just filmed my beautiful 
beautiful Illinois sky. And I just walked around my bee yard and I said, I love you guys. I appreciate you watching. I cooked a breakfast out front oh, on nice. an open fire with oh, my wife. It was, I, I spent so many days editing that video, getting those perfect still shots and everything. Nobody likes it. It's uh, like, oh, that's my favorite video. Heart and soul in it. I think crickets. to this day, it's got like 4,000 views. Wow. And I can make another video yesterday that's got 10,000 views. And it's like, you know, you just can't. But, you know, my wife is a big encourager. She said, make the videos that you like to make. You're the creator. You yeah, create that's, something that's that awesome. you enjoy creating. And, and that's what I do. I just think, how can I help people? What questions are they asking? And then how do I come alongside of them and answer that? That's if you think about that. How many in all of our lives and all of our experiences? If anyone out there, um, if your life is perfect and you're always living on the mountaintop constantly, would you raise your hand? <laughs> we wow. have a few. <laughs> Look at you. The, wow. the, the, the truth of the matter is, is life does a lot of this too. Yeah. Right. And so does our beekeeping. Yeah. And yeah. what's important is we're if we are just sharing our journey and our experience with beekeeping yeah. throughout the ups and downs. Um, videos are going to hit, I think, like that too. Yeah. And, and but I, when you're sharing that full scope of the yes. ups and downs, we know who David is as a beekeeper. So then when we see the nuts and bolts, now we have a little bit more of a clue on the heart and the mind mm -hmm. of the guy behind mm -hmm. it. And while sometimes those videos maybe don't hit like we would hope, I'm, I'm going to not get choked up about something like this, David. But the thing about it is, Sometimes we are put in a position and we have that tug on our heart to do a certain thing for a certain reason. And we're so on fire to do it. We're so inspired and so pumped up to, to do this thing. But if it impacts one person and yeah. makes That's a right. difference in their life, yeah. if it's mentoring with Hives for Heroes and, and, and keeping veteran suicide down, if it's keeping beekeepers on the brink of quitting beekeeping, moving forward, if it's encouraging somebody, lifting somebody up, helping a community grow, and it's that one video that one person sees and that one person now is influenced and inspired and they go out and they do something to help somebody else out, that's what it's about. Oh, yeah. And, and I started doing a little bit of that with what's called coffee time, right? Yeah. And I'll make a video on beekeeping. And then at the end, sometimes I'll have a lot. Let's, let's talk about life. Let's mm, have coffee time. Awesome. And I try to encourage people. And I'll get a lot of people to watch that. And oh, I don't like the coffee crap. Just give me the beekeeping me stuff the in a nutshell, you know. But then I get a lot of people say just what you said, like, I'm so discouraged. And that video encouraged me so much. Or I'm going through a pretty tough time right now. And those words, it changed my life. Mm. And, and that's really inspiring for me. Because let's face it, let's be honest. If, if the, I know that we have a lot of content creators here. You guys are great. And a lot of, a lot of you out there doing this, you're starting out and all. If you get stuck chasing the YouTube algorithm and you get stuck looking mm. at the numbers and your money and your subscriber base and did this video perform, that is very unhealthy to do. It's not a good place to be. It's better not to, to look at those numbers. It's better to go out there. <laughs> it's better to go in front of that camera and make that video because now I'm going to get a little philosophical about this. Honeybees are, I know there's things, there are bugs that we need for pollination, but they keep our world existing. And in, in me being drawn to honeybees, I, I can't really describe why I was. And me starting to make YouTube videos, I can't describe what it was. But I will say, whether you call it God or the universe or you fill in your blank, I was drawn into that. And I know this is going to sound very weird. Believe me, it sounds weird for me. But I feel there's some sort of a higher leading that when I make that video, I feel like there's a greater power saying, this is what you're going to talk about today. This is what you're going to say today. I've made videos on beekeeping can be discouraged or discouragement. And all at once, it just brings encouragement to so many people. Absolutely. And even the Google algorithm, which I do occasionally look at, it does like it when I use words like discouragement right. or, you know, encouragement. And right. so it's then I realize I've got to find a way to use beekeeping as a way to make a YouTube video, but at the same time, show my enthusiasm for life, right. show my love for people, and show the the bees give us an example of how all the bees work together as one super organism that we need to do that as people. 
You know, Absolutely. there are bees of different color right. that get along yeah. in the hive. And yeah. I think that's what we need to be Absolutely. as people. Yeah. And there's Italian bees and there's bees from all parts of the world that are, exist together. Right. And I think that's so exciting. And it was so wonderful when I was just stuck in my little box of making videos and, and uh, filming and working my bees that I started meeting other content creators. Because then you feel like... <gasps> There's somebody that knows what it's like. There's right. somebody that I can talk to. It was great talking to Fred Dunn and you guys and Cayman, and we start sharing the same fun things and the same troubles that we have in making videos. Because let's be honest, there are days that we say, I think this is going to be my last video. Oh, yes. I, I just can't oh, do yeah. this anymore. Yeah. It's, I can't. I mean, there are times I go out and film, and I have gathered wonderful footage, and my, my camera wasn't on. Or my microphone wasn't on. And I was like, I can't redo this. It took too much energy to do it the first time. Right. But I do. I, I go and film it again. So we are not somebody out there that just have it all together, that we're perfect, it works out well. We struggle too. It's hard to go out there every day and do it again. What's, what's inspiring too to think about is um, not a lot of us vocalize those struggle, internal struggles. It's one thing to see what's going on here. It's another thing to figure out, okay, uh, this frame rate, the ISO, which lens, right? And then capture it and then get the audio. Do all these things to try to share the experience of what you're seeing here. And no matter what you do, it's never as good as this. Yeah, I know. Like right now, like having everybody in the live studio audience being a part of all this, it is never going to be as good as this. When we watch these videos and we cut it and we put it back, it is never going to be this yeah, again. Yeah. And we try to share this and put that out so other folks can share and be a part of this experience. But there's also something to be said about the simplicity of taking time to not do that. It's the going on vacation without the dad camcorder capturing every <laughs> spoonful of pancake and this yeah, and that, and, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, with, with, with us, we have seven kids. And, and what I learned is, is when we can all get together, when we do, yeah, it's fun to have a picture or two as a timeline, but I, I really enjoy sometimes putting all the phone down uh, and just enjoying and being engaged in that moment, even sometimes in that season. And for us at the farm this year, with the growth, with the shop and the bees and everything else, we've been so engaged with the art of doing that there has been, there's been no bandwidth left internally for us to do a lot with capturing it for others. And I think it's important to keep in mind that we will go through ebbs and flows in seasons where we're capturing, where we're not. Um, I'm always reminded though, is that when I'm feeling like I'm overcomplicating and it's a three camera shoot and it's six mics and it's this, and I'm trying to get the limiter and the compressor right on the audio and all this kind of stuff and da 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 da. I'm always reminded of a certain Canadian with an iPhone and a cup of Tim Hortons coffee <laughs> yeah. who's doing this, going around, and that's it. And I'm thinking there's also beauty in the simplicity. The most important thing about what Ian does, I think with the Canadian Beekeeper blog or what we all do individually, is when you are genuinely sharing your experience, that authenticity knows no filter. It doesn't need any of that. Yeah. What we do, we sometimes geek out on the art of film or the art of storytelling and the art of the actual product. Oh my gosh. Canadian flag. Oh, yeah. Wait, hold I gotta get a picture of that. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. It's we'll even, it's even, Ian. it's I can't, even I can't autographed. Get the camera turned around. What did Tom <laughs> Nolan bring that? Wow, look at that. Oh my he got gosh. It. Well, that's a good point, Greg. And I, I wanna say for <laughs> aspiring YouTubers that yes. are watching or that are yeah. here with us today, <laughs> uh, a couple of things that I've learned that I wasted a lot of time on is that when you go to edit your video, if you really micro edit it, if you try to get it to be perfect, if you try to get that special word to appear at a certain mm -hmm. time, that is such a waste of time. It is. In the, in the beekeeping community, like you said, with Ian and his channel from Canada, uh, you know, it really doesn't matter to the beekeeper a lot about all that fancy edit that you do. And so that, that's a tough spot. To, but we can get trapped in that. You can try to make that perfect video. And uh, it, can be a, it can be a real drain when the audience, I, I've tested it on my channel. My audience doesn't, they're not going to watch a video anymore that's highly edited and really flows great versus one that I got through together yep. and I just put out there really fast. 
it, it doesn't really make it's any amazing difference. how that happens and i really appreciate you sharing those kind of things yeah. so those are a lot of the things that no one really wants to talk about and yeah. for those who are consuming the content they probably don't even think about that right and just think, they don't. Oh, yeah. someone has a better camera oh, yeah. than this guy and somehow yeah. it just um but I, i've done some amazing edits like that, that that i don't even think the viewer even noticed right you know how you walk yeah. out of this room yeah, and, and into the next room but you don't see that camera because yeah. you refilmed it and all yeah. that Nobody it's a even three cared. hours it's just, for a yeah, six three second hours. transition. Yeah. I do want to say one thing about family, and then you probably need to kick me out of here. But um, I, you know, I I raise my wife and I raised six children on a bee farm, right? So we know what you you're yeah. going through, and and so we were able to put them all to work. They did everything. My my uh, youngest daughter is with me today, Karee, and uh, Karee uh, was great because she just plowed into everything. She's gone down south and 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 done our package bees with us one night Cree and i when she was younger we spent all night getting hundreds of packages labeled and uh, stapled together mm -hmm. and sent off to the post office Cree was so great and when she was younger she took to grafting queens we were raising queens together mm. she was featured in a major magazine country woman for queen rearing she's wow. a great grafter great queen yeah <laughs> producer uh and she was just uh when our business was growing she was just always there answering the phones taking orders you know and so it's it's amazing that you can expose your uh family to things like this but at the same time i i feel like during that time we're just jumping from one fire to the oh, next you know yeah. it's just like how do i get these packages uh, you know, the truck isn't going to take them. How do I find a UPS truck to put them on? How do I track that truck down? And it's just, it can really be a firefight. Yeah. And so at the time you're doing it, you're just moving from one fire to the next. And I, I wish it wasn't like that. But at the same time, that's what enabled me to become kind of like where I'm at today, going through all of that. It, but Forged in fire. Yeah, it wasn't easy. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. David, thanks for not only what right, you guys. do on your, yeah. on your channel. Thanks for being here uh, and being a part of this day and sharing what, what this community means to you. We really appreciate you taking time to be with us. Thank you. Uh, the Stream TV well, I love you chat. guys so much. You know that. I appreciate all that you do for me. And like you've helped me so much. Anything I can ever do to return the favor, I, I want to do it. You know, Greg was so kind and he said, what, what, what do we need to pay you? What do I need to give you to, to be here? And I was like, you don't owe me anything. You know, I'm coming on my don't own. Don't get any ideas, guys. <laughs> okay, don't, don't get any ideas. Yeah. No. I think everybody is worthy of what they earn and what they make. So it's just well, there's right. your free coffee cup. Oh, a, that's two of them that's now. Two. Thank you. Give it up for David Burns. A lot of us, as we are raising businesses and creating products and raising bees and trying to grow a family and grow a community, you know, sometimes we have been that ship out on those rough seas in the dark and, and not know uh, what the future holds. And somehow all of us, if we think back and look, there has always been a lighthouse that has shown safe harbor, maybe showed the dangers of the rocks, provided a place where we can, we can just cruise for just a minute so we can keep sailing and keep moving on. And that's special. And I'm gonna thank everybody here for doing just that. I'm gonna thank you again for watching here on the live stream, the podcast, and on the replay. And as always, I wanna remind you to be the lighthouse and be the change you want to see in this world. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.